Mark and Kansas are certainly no strangers, and they played each other earlier in the season. Mike Krzyzewski's Blue Devils beat Larry Brown's Jayhawks in the championship game of the 1985 preseason NIT. In the early going, Kansas seems determined to even that score, connecting on several fast-break baskets. Danny Manning's hustle leads to a Cedric Hunter layup. When Duke's Mark Allery misses from the outside, Greg Dryling's rebound starts another fast break. Calvin Thompson puts the Jayhawks up by six. Two early fouls on star forward Danny Manning force Kansas into a more cautious defense. Duke quickly takes advantage. Mark Allery works free inside. Nine straight points, capped by this basket by All-American guard Johnny Dawkins, give the Blue Devils the lead with 12 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Reunion Arena then becomes Dawkins' personal showcase. Hitting from all angles, the College Player of the Year scores 15 of Duke's first 25 points. And the Blue Devils take a six-point lead with four minutes to go in the half. But even with Manning and the seven-foot Dryling in early foul difficulty, Kansas fights back. Forward Archie Marshall narrows the gap. Calvin Thompson goes way up to cut Duke's lead to three at halftime. After stretching their lead to seven points early in the second half, Duke suddenly turns cold, missing eight of their next nine shots. Turgeon feeds Kellogg. And the Jayhawks are flown. Coach Brown liked that one. And he loves this one. Kansas hits four consecutive shots and takes a 56-53 lead with 9.43 to go. Duke stays close with some timely foul shooting, but the Blue Devils continue to have problems from the field. Kansas cashes in again, but this is a bittersweet basket. Archie Marshall's knee injury will require more than a year of rehabilitation. While his teammates are shooting a combined 37%, Duke's Johnny Dawkins picks up the slack. 65-63 Kansas, 3.40 to play. Meanwhile, Duke's Mark Allery shuts down Manning, holding him to a career-low two field goals. At the other end, Manning's frustration results in his fifth foul on this beautiful backdoor play from David Henderson to Allery. The game is tied with just under three minutes to go. Amazingly, with Dryling, Manning, and Marshall on the bench, the Jayhawks still hang tough. Dalvin Thompson grabs the loose ball and makes it 67-65 Kansas. With under two minutes to go, the Blue Devils look to top. Henderson misses, but Dawkins is there for his 24th point of the game. 67, 67, 149 to go. Kansas fails to retake the lead, and Duke works the ball to senior Mark Allery. Freshman Danny Ferry scrambles for the rebound, and Duke goes ahead with 22 seconds to go. Cedric Hunter works the ball up court, looking for Kellogg, who leads Kansas with 22 points. Kellogg has missed just three of 14 shots all day, but he can't get this 16-footer to fall, and when Tommy Amaker grabs the rebound for Duke, the Blue Devils earn their ticket to the championship game. Amaker's free throws make the final margin four. Duke's seventh victory in eight games this year decided by five points or less.
some 4,000 games, the NCAA championship comes down to one game between the nation's two hottest teams. Duke has won 21 straight, and the Blue Devils' 37 victories is an NCAA single-season record. Denny Crum thought Duke's number one ranking was well-deserved. I thought when I saw them play early in the year that they were the best team I had seen. Uh, it was early in the year, but as the year went along, I think uh, they proved that uh, that was accurate. Uh, they'd won 21 in a row coming into the finals of the tournament, and, and they were playing as well or better than anyone, and that's why they were ranked number one, and rightfully they should have been. Denny Crum is in his 15th season at Louisville. The Cardinals have reached the final four six of those 15 years, including four times in the 1980s. The Cardinals suffered six losses during a brutal early schedule, but they've rebounded to win 16 in a row and 20 of their last 21. The teams exchange baskets early until Duke's Johnny Dawkins takes over. The All-American guard hits 11 points in the first four minutes. and sparks the Blue Devils to an 11-2 spurt and a five-point lead. Coach Crum has great respect for Dawkins' ability to control the game. But Dawkins uh, was a great guard. He has been ever since he's been at Duke and uh, had a lot of attributes that uh, I like in guards. One, he had great jumping ability. Uh, his tremendous quickness, uh, even probably more than both of those factors, and they are crucial. Uh, he was a great sh shooter with senior experience, and that kind of leadership is hard to overcome. Louisville's backcourt has yet to score a single point, but the front line is alive and well. Freshman Purvis Ellison cuts the deficit to three. The Blue Devils respond with nine for nine foul shooting, and this basket by senior Mark Allery, giving Duke a 31-23 lead with six and a half minutes to go in the half. Louisville's backcourt still can't hit a shot. Senior Milt Wagner misses from short range. But Ellison is there for the rebound. Meanwhile, Duke is having problems of its own. Five turnovers late in the half, combined with Ellison's outstanding play, helped the Cardinals tie the game at 33. Duke misses 11 of its last 15 shots of the half, but David Henderson leaves two Cardinals on the deck and gives the lead back to the Blue Devils. And not surprisingly, the half ends the way it began. Dawkins hits his 15th point of the half. And Duke takes a three-point lead into the locker room. 